this next um, speaker is Ian. Ian's also a big name in the gaming industry. He's from the Witching Studios, and he's going to talk to us about how we can connect and bond in a meaningful way uh, through games. Okay, so welcome, Ian. Okay, Z. Hello, I no need to click. I believe I have a video prepared. Gentlemen. I did not grow up in front of a television. I spent most of my time with my grandfather as he told me stories. He told me of Sherlock Holmes, of Justice Pao, of the, you know, the Condor heroes, of Greek mythology, Roman mythology, Norse mythology. And it was very telling of who he was and what he enjoyed. I found out a lot more about myself, what I enjoyed. And also, I got to live in worlds bigger and greater than anything I could have in my own imagination. Telling stories is a way that we as humans teach and learn. And play is how we practice what we listen and learn about. Now, games are a fantastic way to do so. Hi, I'm Ian. I tell stories and I make games. I've been doing so for the last six years. And very much what I believe in and what I'm about is sharing an experience. And this is something that you can do very easily with games and with the people you play with. Because while a game can be a very personal experience, it can also be something you share with the, the people around you. Now, uh, I tool this talk very much for the idea of somebody that either doesn't play as much games or only know a certain type of games. So if you're talking about Angry Birds, or uh, Clash of Clans, yes, that is, those are great games, but those are not exactly the kind of games I'm going to be talking about today. Today, I want to talk about games that, talk, uh, that, you know, that have story, that have meaning beyond just the experience that you're currently having. And through what we have, it gives you an opportunity to bond with the people around you, specifically uh, children. Because I believe that there is a poor connotation towards playing games right now because the mass media really has us believing, really have us believing that playing games is bad or somehow it's a zero sum. If I play a game, it means I cannot succeed in school on things like that. I definitely do not believe in that. And I think that there is a great opportunity here because, like I said, we as a species grew up by listening to stories around a campfire. And things like that have facilitated us and allowed us to see and understand things that is beyond what we already know, which is why we have cave paintings, is to progress a story you know, that would outlast the person telling it. That's what writing is about. So games allow us to share knowledge. One of the biggest ways to do that is in history. So this is Civilization V, and it's a game that takes you through the ages. You start very much as settlers and cavemen along the plains, and you build and you find out technologies. You find out about the wheel, iron working. You, know, you, you discover oil over the process. And, this, and games like this, they talk about a lot of other things, like for example, social policies, religion. And you know, that learning process is also expanded upon because games like this have something called a codex. You can actually, an encyclopedia. You can read more about the things that you are seeing. Why are the English long bowmen so much better than, say, a, a normal bowman? These, these things are explained. Uh, and more than that, it's also a lesson in history as you are progressing. So any kid playing these games, there's a lot of um, larger concepts going on, but at its core, he's learning things he didn't know before he started playing that game. And that in itself is a great lesson to learn. And I'm hoping that educators here will start to embrace games as a way to convey ideas and information. Uh, the funny thing about this is that uh, there are civilizations that you meet along the way and they're all represented. Singapore is represented in this game as well. We are a maritime uh, city-state and you can co-conquer it if you like as well, right? But anything else, by meeting all the various leaders that will pop up and you can talk to, they all also have AI and they're kind of built towards the kind of character you are and uh, the kind of character that it's based upon. The funny thing is that there is a known bug in this game where Gandhi is actually the most violent leader in the game. <laughs> And uh, he will most likely attack you upon meeting you. So, you know, uh, that's one thing about games. The other thing is also about taking you to places that you didn't know about. Or you take you to places where, you know, you only know about in your textbook. Right? So, uh, further after this clip, there will be one that talks about, that shows you what it's like to be a paratrooper in uh, World War II. Uh, during the, uh, it's uh, one, of the, uh, one of the Medal of Honor series. 
Now, that opportunity allows us to, you know, to see exactly what the people then and there were experiencing. Something that can, it's very hard to understand and very hard to encompass within a textbook. So context. Games provide context and it allows you to see the kind of stories that the people were, were living then and there. And not only that, you had control about what you did because your own choices and the things that you do in the game very much uh, dictates the, the response of what's happening in the game. So, uh, you know, you talk about history and then there's, here we go. Jumping out of an airplane is one of the safest things a man can do, provided he follows proper procedure. When the red light goes green, you jump. Follow the man in front of you. Don't stop. Don't think. Go, 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 go! something you can't encompass in a textbook. That feeling, that understanding of what's going on. But more than that, games are more than about fighting and war. There is also relationships and ideas that can spring from conversation. So this is a game, wow, my brain just spaced. Well, this is a game. And, <laughs> and very much what this game is about is, uh, this is a point and click game. So the style of game of this is that it's a lot slowed down. It's not about how quick you react with your mouse and keyboard, but rather about how you think and how you communicate. This is a game that is great to play with your kids. And it's about the growth of the characters and how they deal with problems and situations, which is something that I believe that the education system right now does not touch on enough. You know, the whole idea that you know, making choices and you know, fi figuring out thinking laterally on how to deal with problems is a very big part of what needs to happen. So yes, there is story, but within the story, there's also agency. It gives you the ability to move, react, and also respond to what's going on. So aside from just you know, playing the game, if you are playing this with a child, you, know, you can actually talk to them about how do we solve a problem together? What do you think we should do? And it's a safe space because uh, in a point and click adventure, you can't die. You just continue again. So that whole idea that the fear of failure is lost when you play a game like this. And at the same time, something's unfolding and you want to know more. So there's drive to continue as well. A lot of games nowadays, at least the you know, very famous ones, it is very much like a hamster wheel. You keep going for the sake of going, for the sake of going. Uh, I believe that a game should be more than that. And you know, to have games with story, with strong story and strong characters can also tell us a little bit more about you know, morality and how we do the things we do. Why do those characters do that? What drives them to do that? And when kids get a better picture of that, I believe that you know, they're going to go out and practice what they've seen in the real world interacting with people. And not only that, this is very much functionally, it could very much be that bedtime story that you share with your child, right? It's about enjoying it with them versus something that is just simply told. And you know, in the mistakes you make, you can, you can talk about it as well. We did this wrong. What do you think we did wrong? What could we have done? What is the other kind of solution we could have made? 
other games like this, this is Child of Light. It's a beautiful game. Uh, I wish I could let you hear a bit more of the music, but it's a fairy tale. It's about a princess that's caught in another world, and she is exploring and finding out, you know, how does she get back to the world that she knows. And if you notice, there is a little firefly that she talks to. Now, in this game, the keyboard controls the girl, but the mouse controls the firefly. And the firefly plays very much into the gameplay because he collects energy for you, and he also leads you in places that are too dark. Now, this allows a child, even as young as five, to actually move the firefly around and explore and solve puzzles and, you know, uh, learn what's going on in the story. There is a combat system in the game that is uh, a very old style, Japanese style combat where it's slowed down so that the both of you can actually decide what you want to do along the way. So, you know, the aesthetic aside, right, there's so much more interaction you can have with a child. You know, the misconception that if I'm looking at a screen, I'm brain dead, that is lost. That is broken as far as it comes to games. You have that opportunity to move past that. So, like in this situation, you know, the Firefly, using the Firefly's ability to actually unlock the door. And that's very much what I'm talking about. You could just leave the mouse with your kid and go figure it out. What do you think you're supposed to do? How do you intend to do it? And then that kind of leads and carries the story on. Uh, it's also, another thing to note about games is that it is an extremely, nowadays, an extremely cheap investment. Right? You take your kid out to Universal Studios, you, congratulations, you've blown at least 100 bucks if you've got two kids and a family. A game like this costs $15, it gives you at least 8 to 12 hours of enjoyment, at least. Some games, the, it skews even more, you get more hours of what you're trying to, uh, you get more of what you're paying for. And it's, it's something that your kid can take with them all the way. They can replay it, they can share it with their friends. And games are a great way for kids to actually interact with their peers as well because they shared something at home. It's like, you know when we were younger, when we used to watch a show and there was no, you can't download programs, it was whatever was on TV, and the next day you go and like, oh my goodness, do you catch that show? Right? It's that same experience that, you, that can be recreated with games. And you as a, you know, as a parent can be a part of that experience as well. Right? When you hear them talking about, you know, that was cool. You know, we did, we, we found a, a great way on how to solve the problem and how we want to deal with, uh, you know, the, the problem that was presented to us. But past that, past just playing games, there is something bigger as well. There is also the matter of morality and the choices that we make. This is, uh, this, this game does something very unique. You can actually turn back time, right? And you can actually remake the same decisions and take a different choice. Now, this is a great conversation you can have with your child. Why, why did you make that choice? And what repercussions those choices have later in, in the game? That applies to life as well. Every choice your child makes will affect something in the future. If anything else, our kids are the choices they are going to make. And games are a great way to do that in a safe space. And I'm gonna, uh, very soon, I'm going to run a, a scenario where she makes choices and she decides to revert and do, take another choice. And in that point, right, also she foresees repercussions that will come at some point. And if I timed it right, it should be right after this little bit here. So don't think I'm blind. I see everything here at Blackwell. Do you understand what I'm saying? No, and leave me alone. You can't fool me. I know everything about this school. I cover the waterfront. So you better figure out what side you're on. Please, leave me alone. Hope you enjoyed the show. Thanks for nothing, Max. Man, I should have stepped in between Kate and David. That asshole was so over the line. I could rewind and try something different. Hey, why don't you leave her alone? Excuse us, this is official campus business. Excuse me, you shouldn't be yelling at students or bullying them. Hey, hey, nobody is bullying anybody. I'm doing my job. No, you're not. You're part of the problem, Missy. I will remember this conversation.
Oh, Max, that was great. I think you scared him for once. I, I have to go, but thank you. It means a lot. Anytime, Kate. I felt like an everyday hero helping Kate, but now Officer David Dickhead is after me. Maybe I should rewind and mind my own business? And that's what games are about. It gives you the opportunity to connect with yourself, with your peers, with your kids, with their friends. And it's a conversation that I believe will keep going for a long time to come. Thank you. OK, since I have you on stage, I mean, what, what struck me about that was such an interesting thing about games that maybe we've underutilized the capability, but we're moving from a control to a collaborative kind of economy and state and operational kind of uh, mode. So can you imagine if kids who are now forced to go, have you read chapter two by the teacher? Go, the teacher goes, have you played stage two? Do you know, like how? Uh, and, that's a, and, that's, and that's the direction we're already going in. I mean, uh, I am working with various government agencies to actually do that. The IDA awesome. has something like that. It's called uh, Labs on Wheels. Oh, okay. And they actually go to schools and you're actually allowed to, the kids are given an hour to learn what is the basics of telling a story of coding and things like that. And uh, I believe that we're going to progress more in that direction because we want them to understand the why of learning, never mind the what of learning. Yeah. And technology and storytelling are great ways we can do that. So will, will they be participating in um, creating some of the, the kind of textbook games, so to speak, stories? Uh, yes. Uh, first and foremost, the two things we want to t t tell them is that first, there's a potential of that. I think that's the first thing we need to do. We've got to tell kids that, hey, you know, there are opportunities like this rather than just looking at a textbook. Uh, the other one is to give them that space to create and to fail. Uh, that one's a harder fight, but I believe that we are well on our way for that. What, what do you mean by, I know what you mean, but I want you to say it. <laughs> Which is, what do you mean by space to create and fail? Isn't uh, failing a bad thing? Failing is the best thing that you could do. Failing is the best thing that could happen to anybody because you understand where you are, where your limits are, in, where you are in relation to the things you want to do and what steps you need to take to pass that failure, to get past that failure. And uh, that's the beauty of, for example, the lab with wheels because it's not a testable thing. They're going to go in, they're going to try it out, they're going to enjoy themselves. And the outcome is the confidence to try new things again. So, um, so one last question. How would, um, you know, this, this whole year uh, and, and the next couple of years, VR would be the big thing, right? As you go into that last game, you would be playing in a first-person mode. Yes, you possibly yes. could. You possibly right. could, yeah. How would that affect and change it? Where do you think that would take your industry? I think that there are many directions the industry can take. And the, the truth of the matter is that the game industry is huge. Yeah. There are many areas from mobile to PC to console. And uh, we are going to try and fill every niche that we possibly can. Right? So with regards to VR, definitely it is uh, a, a much more um, personal experience that can be created. But I don't think that will be the only thing that we will see in the future. We will definitely see, I definitely can foresee much more collaboration in the experience of games. All right. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Ian, everyone.